Hello, welcome to Bedroom Builds at the From Python to Rust series, episode A, Error Handling. Continuing from the previous episode, number 9, where we talked about iterators. Error handling in Rust is fairly different from uh, Python, because that's already here, the first point you can see. Rust does not support exceptions. How does it work in Rust? Well, you will have to return from your functions a result of uh, this uh, type, the standard result type, either returning your type of the data that you want or an error. So this is uh, integrated into Rust and uh, in order to um, do something that is optional, <clears throat> this is then not full on error, but you still wanna have either none or a type, then you use the option type to return your type or none. And in this way, you can also have your errors bubble all the way up to your main function, for example. So if your function is not able to handle the error, it can return it with this result type. Then uh, the next function that treats it uh, might also reject to do it and uh, return it, or is able to handle it and, uh, I don't know, present like a text to the user. So that's the idea behind that. We don't have to use exceptions to get the same idea. And uh, with this bubbling up, the compiler and then your binary will also be able to give you a stack trace as to where your error was happening. And uh, this will be helpful information in general. Built-in helpers to treat those uh, types, because sometimes you simply just quickly want to write something and don't put in all the effort to have uh, good error handling. You can use uh, unwrap for the uh, error type or the option type. Expect, then uh, you can actually put here a message what you were expecting. This will then give uh, more information as to what happened here instead of just uh, panicking with uh, the unwrap. And uh, the question mark will be explained in further detail when uh, I will show you the code. In general, there's lots of uh, crates that will help you get rid of lots of boilerplate and extra code. And one of the very famous ones, because it's one of the oldest, is the failure crate. However, even the author himself uh, says you should not use it because the error in, used inside of this is not implementing the standard error, error uh, type. And uh, this makes it very hard to use it with other crates or actually stay within what is supposed to be idiomatic Rust. And he himself created a new crate that uh, does a new style of uh, cool error handling. You can check it out, it's called the uh, failure. Or uh, he himself also uh, suggests you to look at a crate called Anyhow. And another good one that I am personally using is Air, which is a fork of Anyhow, so it's basically compatible. And uh, this I would use for application code because this is mostly giving you an easy way of writing error messages and uh, easily handle all of this stuff. If you're writing libraries, so you want to return proper errors with uh, just not just text, but with meta information, it's uh, suggested to use uh, the this error crate, which will help you um, create those in a very good way. And uh, yeah, let's jump over to Rust by example, which is a really uh, cool website, and they also have error handling code. This way, because this is a really big topic, it doesn't make sense to have uh, 10 different uh, source code variations when in the end we are then uh, actually going to use error and uh, this error. Let's jump over. Here you can see the simplest mechanism is simply throwing a panic when uh, a problem happens in your program. This is not very helpful because all this will do is really abruptly stop your application, unwind the stack, and uh, this is not real error handling. So unless it is an error that you cannot handle, then a panic, of course, is the correct uh, reaction. Um, you should uh, not resort to this. However, in uh, this funny example, you are giving the princess a gift. If this gift is a snake, she will uh, scream and therefore panic and the application will stop. So handing over the teddy bear will not be a problem. However, handing over the snake will make her um, 
right, I guess. Now, this is a very simple code and not really what we are looking for. Now we are checking uh, option and unwrap. If uh, we scroll down in the, the code, here you can see that the gift now became an option type of a string. It is then matched. And if it is a snake, it will uh, print out some text that says they don't like snakes. If they like the stuff, so everything else but snakes, they will print this out here. And uh, if you hand a uh, none in, ha in here, then you haven't given a gift, so this option was handled. Then here we get to do the same for our royalty. We now pass an option, however. And here's the use of this unwrap. So this would actually panic for you, which it says also here in the comment. So when you pass none, so no gift to the royal, which is a problem, right? You have to bring a gift. Then uh, it cannot get the inside value because it would be none. So only uh, option that is a sum, like up here, the sum inner or the sum snake, would actually work. And if it's a none, this unwrap will for you do the whole panic stuff. And uh, then the code can continue if you have a sum. However, now you can check the inside. If the inside is a snake, you will panic again because the royals don't like the snake. Let's uh, jump to the next code that they provide. So now we get to use the question mark if the website loads. So here we go. Now again, we pass an option and we return an option from this function. So next birthday, current age is an option type, unsigned integer. So here, as the description says, you are with the question mark basically trying to get an age out of this. If none was handed over, this question mark for you returns automatically the option, in this case none. <laughs> and uh, if current age is sum, as explained, you can actually use it. And then you can uh, return a sum, so therefore not none, the option here, um, with your formatted string that says your age in the future. And therefore you can actually with this unwrap, expect and question mark, uh, get rid of uh, most of the boilerplate code because in order to write this, you would have to actually write a match statement that reacts to a sum. In the case of sum, you can do this. In the case of none, you would uh, return the none and uh, this makes it much easier to use. Let's go further down because this will then show you a practical application. So if you now wanted to do this for more complicated nested structures, like here you have a job, if you have a job, then you would want to have the phone number. And if you have the phone number, you can get the error code. And uh, with these question marks in the middle, you don't have to write lots of nested match statements. You will just write it in one line that is fairly easy to read. And if one of those is none, it will just return the option none directly and uh, no problem. Let's hop over to our first uh, code to see how this would uh, match more or less uh, to Python code. On uh, the left again, we have Python as always. On the right, we have our Rust code. So what we are writing here is a multiply of two strings. What they do is uh, parse the strings into integers, do the multiplication, and this will work fine here. But in this case, it will fail since we do not do any error handling in Python. So there is no try except block up here. This will fail here catastrophically and uh, give us a stack trace. And uh, the same is true on the right. We have our Rust code. We do not return an option type or a result. We just return the number. So this, therefore this code has to work. And uh, we also do the same. We can get the string slices in 
we parse them, we do the two numbers, we return uh, the multiplication of them, works fine, does not. Let's actually run this code to see the differences because we want to do Python first, as always. So Python, no handling. As we said, the first example works out. We get our result that the double is 20. However, the second one produces our traceback because it cannot parse the first because t is not a number of the base 10. Hopping over to Rust, we Rust compile no handling and it does not compile why is that the case well we are doing something that is returning an result type as you can see here so we get the result of i32 if the parsing worked out if not we get a parse int error now to not handle the case as we learned before we have our helper uh, method called unwrap so we have to unwrap in order to get the same behavior as we have in our python code so let's add uh, unwrap in both cases and run the compiler again now he is happy so just to see to show you that it does work no handling rs is executing and we get a panic uh, that we called an unwrap on the result and the error inside was a parse int error and the parse int errors kind is invalid digit fairly informative we can even get a backtrace if we wanted to now let's go to the next example that shows uh, in theory how you would do it in Rust given. So on the, the left, I'm now handling the error in Python. Here we have exceptions. So I do my try except block. I try, I accept, I catch the index error and uh, put a separate message from the value error, which comes if um, the integer parsing fails. And uh, therefore, <clears throat> if uh, we cannot access the first item here, we get the index error. If the parsing fails in this line, we get here. If we manage to make those two things, we return the value. Otherwise, there is no return down here. This means for Python, the default return is a none. Here in those um, vectors or lists in this case, because it's Python, Python, we return the numbers that put all work. We return the first error. Uh, we put the first input that would create an error because we have no items in here. And uh, the other possible error is passing something that is not a number. And uh, we do the same on the right, but you can already see in Rust this causes a lot of boilerplate. It makes a lot of sense to understand how this works though, because simply using the error libraries will not give you a full understanding of what's going on. This is taken out of the Rust by example book. What they do is they import the standard error and the formatting, which will then be used to create a custom error type. And the first thing they do is they do a type alias to make this a bit more easy to read to define the return type of the function. So what they do here is use the standard result uh, of the type t that then gets a boxed dynamic errors this is uh, one of the ways you can do multiple different errors because now we are handling either a problem with the vector being empty or a parsing error and uh, this is a uh, very long and convoluted to write every time so you better do this type alias is their suggestion and then they create this empty vec struct and implement the formatting display trait for it to have a text that actually makes sense to the end user. And then they implement, implement the standard error error trait for empty vec. 
Just as a reminder, the failure crate does not do that, so it is not very useful <coughs> in the future. Therefore, use some of the other helper crates for error handling. And here we get to use our type alias to return the integer from the multiplication. And what they do here is the vec first returns an option. So this is either something that you can use and put into first, or you are producing an empty vec since this is of type error and you do the question mark, the question mark will for you do the return into result error of this empty vec error type. And then the parsing of the string, if it errors out again with the question mark, will then for you return the error as well. If those two lines worked out, you get your multiplication. Since you are having a result return type, you now have to wrap your return into this OK. Otherwise, it will not understand uh, that this will be a result. Down here, we have a helper for printing this stuff. So you have an input of the type result. You match it if it is of OK. So this is why you have to wrap your multiplication into OK. Then you can actually print the result. If it is of type error, it will type print out the error. And further down in the code, you can see the same stuff as we have on the left here in Python. We first put a valid uh, vector, then an empty one, and then the, the tofu. So these three will work out and be error handled. Let's run those. So Python first. So Python. Boilerplate. And you can see it does not produce a stack trace. It gives us all the results with the texts that we intended to show. So Rust C boilerplate. And this one works fine as well. So you can see here that First doubled is 84, is coming out from this OK match. And then we have the error twice, but it shows different error messages. So first it shows invalid first item to double is from our custom error that we've defined. Let's quickly check this back in the code, <coughs> which you can see here. And then this error message, invalid digit found in string, is coming from the standard library. It is inside the parse int error. So that would be the basic way of um, how error handling is um, supposed to be done in Rust. And you can see there's a lot of boilerplate to write, and uh, that will probably keep you from writing Rust error handling and use unwrap and expect all over the place. But um, there are helpful libraries and crates out there. Let me show you how you would implement this very same application inside Air. But first, let's show you another way of dealing with multiple errors. So you can either, as you can see here in the code, uh, use this box then error, or you can actually pre-create an enum of all your types that of all your error types that can happen. And uh, this way, if you, especially if you write a library for others to use, it is uh, much easier to understand what can happen and can be returned from your application. Let's hop back to the website of Rust by example to see how this is supposed to be done. Okay, on the right, you have now another way of uh, getting around uh, this uh, double error problem. You can come up with your own error type. Again, uh, now you don't box the error. You tell your result type to only return either the type that you put in or your double error. You implement the display again. This is very important and necessary. And in uh, your double first code, 
you can then return the double error if the first item is not found and uh, then chain it with the end then uh, we have a closure that takes the parameter s so the sum coming out of the factor first you try to parse it if this fails you can map this error to now your double error we lose the information however that this was a parse int error we just know that a double error happened in this function and if uh, there was no error coming back we don't run map error it runs the normal map which does uh, the computation for us so argument will be whatever came out of the parse and we do the doubling of this value on uh, the left we see another alternative to boxing errors now this is the way more elaborate version and this is what your library should do so we still call it double error but now it's an enum as you can see here and you have two things that can happen either the vector is empty or you have a parse int error so this is a general parsing problem therefore you will create your variant parse that holds a parse int error you create uh, your um, display formatter for your double error this now has to handle the two um, variants of your enum so you match to <clears throat> the enum and if you have your empty vec you write your error message that tells the user it should use a vector that has some elements and if you run into a parse error you get a reference to the uh, actual error that came in the first place and uh, you can then format this one now you would then of course implement error for double error there you can implement the source so if you have the empty vector error the source uh, will be none so you can do that since this is an option or <clears throat> since your parse error holds a reference to the actual error happened which is a parse int error you can then return the source of your parsing error um, with a sum now you see already this is a lot of boilerplate that is uh, coming towards you and let's scroll down a bit this is not all we are still continuing now you have to implement the from trait for a parse int error for your double error so that um, the question mark here can actually convert the parse int error into your double error which will then become a double error enums parse variant that holds the parse int error that gets passed to your from conversion we have the same double first definition as we had uh, before and uh, this uses the question marks which is already taking away boilerplate from your actual computation but you had to write a lot of boilerplate to get your result and your custom error types now let's hop over to uh, the code where I have implemented all of this using one of the libraries that are available to you and you will see this actually very easy and only um, causing a few lines to write in the end this time I will open code on the left and on the right with the same so let's close this go out of Python in. so here we have our main function Ta -da. given that we have the boilerplate code on the right we can see now that we have the here the boxed error solution with the multiple errors and here we actually just use the create air at the top then the macro air and result this result already has this crazy definition up here so we don't have to care about it or maybe some other form maybe it's not the boxed error I don't care the library use my uh, maintainer does it for me and I, I uh, simply get to use the very easy definition result and my type that I want to actually return to get the first item I will ask the vector to give me the first one if this is okay it will actually do it or else it will call the closure which uses the air macro 
to just to create the error message no first item for me. This will then be returned by this question mark automatically for me. And error makes sure that this is an actual standard error derived uh, implemented type that can be returned and bubbled up and used. The parsing we keep the way it is because this will re raise a parse int error. And uh, the rest of the code is basically now looking the way it was on uh, Python, right? The only thing that is important for you to do is import the crate with the necessary stuff. And then this is the easiest way to do it. If you just want to have a message, you use this error. So for application code that just has to tell a user what happened, like file was missing or we don't have the first item and other stuff like that. This is uh, very uh, easy to use and amazing stuff. Now let's run this. For this we have to use um, cargo. I have set this up to have uh, multiple binaries inside my package. This means that I have to tell cargo run which binary to run since we are presenting here how air works. I am running the binary using air and uh, you can see it compiles it here and it works uh, fine. The output is uh, working, tells us no first item and the first string not found. Now coming back to our boilerplate example that we saw in the Rust by example code. We can also do that fairly easily. Coming to the example where we use uh, this error, which would be used for library code, we can actually compare this to our uh, more boilerplate stuff that we saw before on the website. So what they are doing on the right, all of this, these lines here that do lots of stuff, can actually be done in this block with the this error crate. So if we now check out again on the right how many lines those are, we can start here at line five, let's say, and we stop at the double first, so line 45. If we subtract, let's say, the comments in the code, we end up with uh, 30 lines of uh, boilerplate that are actually not necessary. So in order to get this double error going with uh, the this error code, we still import from error the result, because that is very handy to use. And we use the this error, the macro deriver, then we call the derive error for our enum double error. This then still is the same on the right. We have the two variants, empty vec and parse, holding a parse int error. We have now here a attribute error that gives us a string dec declaration for our empty vec. So these two lines actually do all of this uh, display for double error and in case of empty wake write something code and below the same thing and even more powerful we can use formatted arguments this means that in this case i am printing this text and the item zero which is passed to our parse variant in this case the parse int error and uh, you can see on the left, all of this code fits onto one page and it's easy to read and very easy and powerful to use for your end user of your library because down here we can use the result type which implements as uh, is suggested by the Rust community the standard error um, trait. And we get to use it fairly easily. So if the first item is not here, we use the OK or to return the double error enums empty vec variant. In case of error, our question mark now handles this to return this in as a result error. And for parsing, we map the error so we can have access to the reference of it here with the E coming into our closure. 
we use the double error enum parse variant hand over the reference and uh, we have a powerful library that will tell you that you had a source parse int error this is why we use the uh, from in the parse variant and uh, your user of this library double first can now actually handle the two different errors or also bubble them further up using a question mark himself for example i hope this introduction into error handling gave you a good overview of how it's done in rust that uh, always returning the errors and uh, the user has to actually handle the whole chain of errors himself is not that bad if you use those amazing helper crates there are many other cool ones out there like the one already mentioned mentioned called failure has an interesting approach so go check them out thanks for watching coming up next on the from python to rust series are traits